Hello everybody, uh, this is the Ultimate Borussia podcast episode number one and in this, uh, in this, uh, on these videos it's going to be a series of videos where we are going to talk about Borussia Dortmund news in, in plain English. My name is Mustafa and I have with me uh, my co, uh, uh, co-presenter Ryan from uh, Michigan, United States. Say hi Ryan. Hello, it's a pleasure to be here. Happy to be a part of this new and this uh, inaugural podcast. So, Ryan, uh, tell us about yourself. How did you get how how did you get to know uh, Borussia Dortmund? When did you when did you start becoming a Borussia supporter? So, growing up in uh, in America, soccer is not really as big of a sport as it is elsewhere in the world, which Uh, that's just like the American thing, I guess. We really like American football. Um, we play hockey, basketball, baseball, some other big sports. But right around high school, I uh, was introduced to soccer through some of my friends who were on the soccer team, and they also ran cross country with me. And uh, I didn't, I didn't really know what to think at first. I didn't know which teams to follow. But eventually, I discovered Dortmund, and I loved their history, their story, their passion, and I also liked. that their, uh, their rival Bayern, there was like a really good reason to, to not like Bayern. So like the rivalry was really strong and Dortmund was not necessarily, they're not like, they're not a Real Madrid or a Barcelona. You're not a bandwagon fan when you support Dortmund. You, you can support Dortmund for who they are and I'm a really huge proponent for supporting a team for who they are, not just because they're good, but Dortmund still also has a very history for a lot of talent that makes it worthwhile to support them so there's a good balance i think of elite talent and elite history but also you don't have that bandwagon effect you're not i feel like a lot of americans just support real madrid because they have big names or barcelona because they have big names or bayern munich because they have big names whereas when you support you the basic names end up wrongly getting purchased by Bayern and that's another reason that it's so fun to hate Bayern because there's just there's so much they do that is disrespectful to Dortmund I think in the Dortmund culture and then since then I fell in love with Dortmund and it was awesome to see Americans like Christian Pulisic make their way onto Dortmund you know it kind of increased I think recognition of Dortmund in America but not not in the same way that I think it should have I still think a lot of Americans really didn't follow it too closely because You know, they don't really follow, like, the American soccer players. They follow Cristiano Ronaldo, Leo Messi, and, you know, Zlatan Ibrahimovic is now in the MLS, and he's, like, a big deal there because he's just dominating. But I think there's something special about Dortmund, and I'd love to see Dortmund grow in popularity across the States. Yeah, that's nice. So you also attended the game uh, in... Uh, where did they play? Dortmund versus uh, Liverpool? They played at uh, South Bend, Indiana, at Notre Dame Football Stadium. And... Uh, If you're from the States, you know Notre Dame is a pretty historic university. Their football team, one of the best in uh, college athletics across the nation, historically speaking. But um, the, the two teams that were played, Dortmund and Liverpool, Liverpool, I think, has a much larger following in the United States. A lot of American soccer fans are more familiar with the Premier League just because the, uh, the English to English translation is a lot easier than trying to follow, you know, a German soccer team or a soccer team that you don't know the language unless they have a huge superstar. And so at the game, the stadium wasn't sold out. It was a very, very hot day. There was probably about 75% of the stadium was, and I think they said there were 45,000 people or so that were there. Yeah. And if I had to guess, I'd guess about 39,000 of those people So, we're wearing so me, red. So, so let me ask you this question. How did you feel? How did you feel being in your first Borussia Dortmund game, like watching them live? How was that? How was the feeling? It, it was absolutely incredible. Uh, the other Dortmund fans were mostly consolidated in the same seating section that I was in. And we were pretty much surrounded by Liverpool fans outside of the, the clump of yellow. I, I like to call it. And all the Dortmunds were extremely excited to be there. You know, there was just, even though there was only a few of us, you could feel the, the Dortmund energy throughout the stadium. And when Dortmund scored the opening goal, like, I think it was like three or four minutes into the match, it really, I could just, there was this sense of energy and pride from the Dortmund faithful. Despite the lack of numbers we had, you could tell that the passion for the Dortmund 
squad was just so strong and the energy from the fans was absolutely remarkable and everyone who was there they weren't just casual soccer fans if they were cheering for Dortmund they were genuine like Dortmund diehards as opposed to the Liverpool section I mean there were a lot of I'm sure diehard Liverpool fans but there were far more just casual soccer fans or casual football fans who aren't really familiar necessarily with European football but they might so to speak recognize the name Liverpool and that's why they went and they probably yeah. wanted to see Mo Salah, but I thought it was really awesome to see all of the Dortmund stars out on the pitch. That, that, that was one, for me, that was one of the games where whoever wins, like you, you're going to be happy. We have Borussia Dortmund that we support and we love. And then we have uh, Liverpool, especially be having like Jurgen Klopp as a coach. Oh, of course. And their, like their, their stunt in uh, the Champions League last season, it was amazing. Like uh, Borussia Dortmund fans were happy all over the world because because there was that, like, it felt like we had something to do with the win. I don't know if, if you feel the same, but the fact that it was like his third, his third final for Jurgen Klopp and he already had one final with Dortmund, another with Liverpool, and then he won his third. That, that was amazing for Borussia Dortmund fans. But let me, uh, but I want to ask you a, another question about, like, like, what are we going to call it right now? Because in... Because in in one part of the world you call it soccer or soccer and we call it football. So we're gonna have an issue here because I'm gonna call yeah. it football. I'm not gonna call it soccer. Like <laughs> how are I'm we trying to get better. I'm trying to get better at calling it football. It's it's hard it's hard to get it into my vocabulary. I know when I write for the website I do I'm very conscious about it. But even even now as I'm talking, I think I said soccer a couple times, but I'm trying to focus on call, referring to it as football or at least European football. And then when I talk about American football, which won't happen very often, I'll say yeah. American football because but I think across the globe, which I think our audience is more than just people in the United States, I think across the globe it's much more known as foot, football or football depending on you know the different dialects and languages, but everyone yeah. else knows it as football. So when I say soccer, I feel like people are kind of like, oh, another American kid, but I, I do recognize that it is football and I will do you know, my best to refer to it as football. Because because like because like in in American football they don't really kick the ball with their with their with their legs like once or they twice really don't, no. every yeah I know but in, in like football like European what you call European football it, or like soccer it's it's like you only play with your your feet you know it's yeah, only it's the goalkeeper football. who has yes the, only the goalkeeper who has the ability to grab the ball with his hands but that's okay that's fine so. You you talked about the website, and I wanna I wanna tell our viewers that we are running a website that's called ultimateborussia.com, where uh, Ryan and I are writing articles and about new news and articles about the team. So you can check it out. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. So we're gonna talk about our new signings, and how do you think, like? Like for me, like I am so excited for the new signings, uh, especially for Julian Brandt because I was following the player in Leverkusen and he is one of the best in the midfield in the Bundesliga and even in Europe. But when I when I when I heard that Borussia Dortmund are going to sign Mats Hummels back, at first I was like I was like very angry, you know. Uh, as were lots of other Borussia Dortmund fans, but then I was like, okay, it, it makes sense. They are they are they want to hire like a a solid defender who has experience, who can like bring that spirit of experience and of like being a, somebody who knows what he's done, what he's doing, and giving his experience to the younger squad. He's, and he can be a leader as well, you know, at the bench. But then I saw the game against uh, the game that he played in in the cup against uh, the Grosskreuz team. I think it's called uh, the team is called Your Your Dingen or something like that. Your Dingen, yeah. Yeah, but but then he, Mats Hummels was was more like of a striker. He he made so many he he ma he had so many chances to score a goal, but in the defense he was like very sloppy. He made so many mistakes. And I was like, dude, if we're, if we're gonna start, <laughs> better get your shit together, bro, because this is not gonna work. <laughs> yeah, it was. Like, I, I was rather disappointed with his play against Yerdingen too. I thought, 
I thought as a, with his experience, he should have been much more reliable. And I think Yerdingen y- didn't have many opportunities to take a shot on goal, but there was one specific break. I think it was either towards the end of the first half or right at the start of the second half where Mats Hummels completely lost his mark and they had a breakaway. And I think a better team in that situation is going to capitalize and score the goal. Yerdingen, fortunately for Dortmund, did not score. But those are situations where I think if Mats Hummels is going to be on the roster and we're going to pay what we paid for him, I think he needs to be able to prevent those situations and close out better in the back. Especially especially that, like Omer Toprak, it yeah. is on loan right now for Werder Bremen. Are you are you aware of that? Yeah, and he was he was very solid, and I think yeah, he, he was great. We, yeah, I, to be honest, I thought based on Hummel's performance the other day, I thought Toprak was more reliable and a better fit at center back for Dortmund than Hummel's looked to be the other day. We'll see if Hummel's can get back into the flow of things throughout the season, but but I don't I, don't, I did I was not pleased or or uh, impressed with how he performed so far. Yeah, yeah. But I'm very excited for the other team. And then uh, they had like a game yesterday. Are you aware yeah, of that? Yeah, friendly, yeah. Yeah, it's a friendly. Like like most of, of the players who didn't play for the for the cup game, they played that game and they like won 4-0. And Mar- Mario Goetz scored. Zagadou scored. Balerdi as well. Leonardo Balerdi. Tell me about Zagadou. I think, I think he's a great player, but he lacks in confidence. What do you think? I, I think that's a fair point. You know, he's 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 still pretty young, but he definitely has you know, the physical presence, I think, to dominate the back line and really yeah. really add support for Dortmund in the back. I think I think where uh, he's I think he's built better than Hummels to sort of protect the box, I think, and close out defenders and especially on corners. I feel like in the past on corners Dortmund have found themselves in difficult situations where they surrender a header on goal from a corner. I think Zagadu has like the presence and the physical presence, presence, and if he can play confidently and play like to his strengths, he can really kind of prevent any opportunities for the opponents. He's got a lot of strength, and he's also got a pretty good sense of the game. I think if he could just stop making those like young player mistakes he still he still plays young you can tell he's still getting a feel for kind of playing the game at this level but i think he absolutely has the potential to be something very special in the back line for dortmund and if he continues to grow and develop in the way he did last season i think he could be a huge asset for the team yeah another point what what do, what do you think about about paco alcacer that, that, that man like scores free kicks like on command like when he decides to score a free kick like it's amazing like I, I always I always I, I'm always like if there's a free kick it should be it should be taken by Marco Royce like there is yeah, no other, other way. way but then Paco Alcacer comes and scores four free kicks for Dortmund <laughs> and I'm like dude it's it's, it's remarkable it's it's magical like like for the other game for the cup game like uh, the other day I was like Okay, what what if he scores that? Like he can he can really score, but what if he does this? And then he scored. I'm like, dude. <laughs> I think uh, last year, I can't remember who we were playing or who Dortmund was playing, but he had a very similar. It was in the it was like the sixth minute of extra time. And yeah. It was to complete a hat trick, and he yes. he came out and took a very similar free kick from yeah. like a very similar position where he he uh, kind of dipped it over the wall and placed it in the uh the, the right corner and the goalie the goalkeeper stood zero chance to save that yeah, i mean that's just... i think that's the, that's the home game that's a home game against against uh, augsburg yes 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 it was like 4-3 and uh, he he uh, it was a great game because uh, dortmund were down 2 and yeah. then they were like 2-1 and then they were down 3 and then they scored 2 and then they scored the... Uh, I think this, that's how he went. And then he scored yeah. a hat-trick, I guess. And it was pretty magical, you know. It was absolutely incredible. That's that's. Yeah. I think that moment is when a lot of Dortmund fans realized Paco Alcacer is an elite talent or at least an elite acquisition for the team. And I'm very glad in the offseason we were able to uh, not only just because he was on loan before, I'm glad we were able to purchase him and keep him permanently. Yeah. Because I, I think it's hugely beneficial for Dortmund to have pretty much a consistent striker who is almost able to score on command. I mean, he, he goes out on the pitch and I think he averages for every 
60 minutes he plays, he averages a goal, which there's no one last year in the Bundesliga who came close to that kind of frequency. You know, yeah. even even some of the top scorers, they have to spend far more time on the pitch before they get themselves an opportunity. Paco Alcacer, it's like he walks out there and he goes and scores a goal and he just does it. Like, there's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. He just goes and scores and he does it very well and very timely as well. Yeah, but but he's a great player, definitely. He's one of the best strikers right now in Europe, but... There's, a, there's an issue with, like, I'm pretty satisfied with the signings this season, but yeah. we need a very experienced, like, like a 30 or 29 year old striker who can like, who we can like pull off in the, in, in moments or situations when we need like an equalizer or a winner, you know, who can like play the, fi the, the last 15 minutes and who can be like a box, you know, who, who can be a striker who can stay in the box, like, like Pizarro or like Lewandowski yeah. or like Mandzukic, you know, these players who Someone can like Someone who's a little more physical too. Someone with a little yeah. more physical presence than Alcacer. Exactly. Say. And we lack that right now. I don't know if, if Dortmund is going to look for something like that, but we really... There was a rumor that they were looking for Mandzukic and I was pretty happy about that because Mandzukic was in Bayern and he has experience in the Bundesliga and he's, he's a deadly yeah. player. He, he's a very, player who very. can score. He is a player who can really, when like when like when uh, Lewandowski was in Dortmund, uh, Mandzukic was in Bayern, and they were like competing for the, the golden boot. You know, the, they were competing yeah, exactly. for the, you know, and and he was very strong. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think we need another striker? I think another striker would be nice. I know we we have a lot of attacking power, but I feel like a lot of our Attacking power right now isn't necessarily aerial power. A lot of our goals are the product of more of the buildup of play. We rely on good passing, short passing, and more buildup. And I think in situations where we might need a quick goal that you can't really take the time to build up, I'm not sure there's someone right now who seems really reliable in those situations, like you said, who you can just sort of throw in the center of the box and he can get his head on a ball or position himself well and kind of body up defenders in the way that someone like Mandzukic could. Mandzukic has a lot of... Not only does he have the knowledge and the presence of mind to put himself in the right position, which, don't get me wrong, the Dortmund players definitely have that, but Mandzukic has the physical, sort of the stature and like the, uh, the physical prowess to maneuver himself in ways where other players... Who might not, who might score more goals might not be able to get themselves into the same positions as Mandzukic because of his ability to use his physical strength. And I think Dortmund would benefit from having that type of player if they. Uh, I think it would benefit them, but, but I also I think they'll be all right without him if they can really sort of solidify. I think the wings and work the ball in. You know, Mario Goza has a lot of potential or a lot of abilities with the ball at his feet, and he can make space when there isn't any. Same with Marco Roy. And I like to think that Hazard and um, Grant will be able to do similar things. But at, at times when defenses start to close down on the wings and really limit our options, I feel like it's going to be interesting to see what different changes Dortmund make in order to have someone in the, in the middle of the field who can kind of just body defenders and take up space in a way that no one really can right now. Yeah, that's nice. And we can talk about like talent. And we, we can talk about Thailand and not talk about Jaden Sancho. Like, oh that my goodness. player. He is that, remarkable. He is one, like, he, he was voted, like, by, uh, I think, uh, Gazeta. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, an Italian or a Spanish magazine, football magazine. He was rated the best uh, under 20 uh, player in the world. And um, yeah. he, his talent is, like, he's, like, crazy. Like, when... If, if you go to YouTube and you type Jaden Sancho skills, like the things you're gonna see, <laughs> he's a, he they're, is a nightmare. They're ridiculous. Yeah, he's like, he's like a nightmare. Like he doesn't care if he humiliates five players all at once. Like he's, he's set up for Paco Alcacer in, in the, the Super Cup game. Yes, that was beautiful. It was so beautiful. I could like, not, dude, like that was, that's elite, I, I, that is elite <laughs> talent. I, wa I went on Reddit and there was this guy who wrote down that Boateng had some messy nightmares. And like Boateng <laughs> is... Because, because, because Messi did something to Boateng. Did, did you... Did, are you aware of that? Yeah, so Messi did like this, this like trick on Boateng and he landed on his... 
he landed very awkwardly on his back and then on his like on his stomach and it was so funny so when yeah. Sancho did that to to the whole Bayern defense everybody was like oh what is he's having missing nightmares <laughs> flashbacks yeah but that was amazing like when you see a player who is like 19 years old who is very mature and Everybody right now is comparing him to Usman Dembele and they are saying that he is way better. Way better than Usman Dembele. Like yeah. he has the maturity. Usman Dembele was very very skilled player but he didn't score as many goals. He didn't uh, set up as many assists as Zidane Sancho and it's just exciting and I'm very happy that he is staying at Dortmund and I think that he's going to and if you want to know, he is the most. He is the only player, I guess, last season who played who played thirty four games. Yeah, he is the only one. He played every game, and he is very consistent. Like, yeah, consistency he's, wise, he's reliable. He, he's great. I don't know, man. Like, he, he's he's. I think he's a generational talent. I really, uh, the comparisons to Usman Dembele. I really, I can understand why those are made, but I would agree he is. I think. Certainly, if not right now, he will be very soon a little bit better than Dembele is. I think Dembele did himself well uh, to get a spot at Barcelona, but it's very, I think it's tough for a guy as young as Dembele to really establish himself as elite when the rest of a roster like on Barcelona is just big name, big names. Like you've got Messi, you've got Suarez. Everyone there is like a really big name, whereas someone like Sancho, while he's playing for Dortmund, that's where he makes himself known. And that's kind of what Dembele did. And that's why he was able to get the attention of Barcelona. But I really think Sancho, I think his skills on the ball, I, I genuinely believe he's a little bit better than Dembele. And I think his, his game sense and maturity, like you said, I think he's not light years ahead, but he's significantly ahead of Dembele in his maturity. And I think that's going to benefit him very well in the long run. He's he's very He's very composed, very... Very uh, reliable and very technical, but he also he he doesn't lose his cool and he's able to like keep himself in the game and he's able to make space for other players by attracting I think a lot of defenders to try and come to him and even when he does that he still manages to work his way around multiple defenders and it, it it's just crazy how quickly he does everything too the speed to match the skill and his ability to finish in front of goal that that's a nightmare for a lot of Bundesliga teams I think that are gonna have to try and defend him throughout the season. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be pretty exciting. And then, fingers crossed, Marco Royce, he should stay in form, like, last season. Like, yeah, it was, was amazing with him last season. It was, like, great. He scored so many goals. He, he was a leader figure, like, leadership figure in the team. And you could just see him. Like you, could, like, like, you can just see his passion for football. And he's one of the greatest... He's one of the greatest players in football... German football history and in Europe in the last 10 years and I'm, I'm very sad because because he had so many injuries that made it difficult for him to to, yeah. to make a name for himself in, in, in the world but he, he is recognized as one of the best and when he when he takes the ball man like magic happens you know he's, oh my, he it's, is it's fast crazy. he has great bad ball control he influenced he influenced players like Lewandowski in so many ways, you know. He influenced players like Godze in the game. He is great. And I think that he's a great player. I am I am sure he's going to be playing for Dortmund till, till the end of his career. I would agree, yeah. Yeah, and I am sure he's going to get a good managerial spot at Dortmund because he is a legend. He is a real Dortmund legend. And I wish he, he, he stays like fit this season because it's going to be amazing with him on board i would agree yeah and i think he he absolutely deserves to be able to stay healthy for a season you know the injuries he's battled he's had to endure so much on so many different levels and to see him continue to come back and come back each time better than he was when he got injured that type of that type of determination and that type of perseverance it's very hard to come by and I think it's a testament to how much he loves the game and his passion, like you said. You can see it the way he plays. And actually, a, a big asset that he brings to the team, I think, that I noticed a lot when I was at the match against Liverpool at Notre Dame, one thing I never really picked up on before, how well he creates space when the ball isn't at his feet. The different runs and cuts he's making when the ball is on the other side of the pitch or when it's out wide and he's in the middle, he kind of cuts around and in behind midfielders and defenders and either creates 
create space for a pass or a through ball to him or create space for his teammates to dribble up and make a play. It's, he really, his game sense and his ability to influence the game, even when the ball isn't at his feet, are, are what make him so lethal, I think, and so so valuable to Dortmund. And I really hope that his talents are finally repaid. I think he, he certainly he would like to see another title under his belt with Dortmund this year in the Bundesliga, and I think he's absolutely deserving of another one. That's great. So we have like three, two minutes left on the clock. We want to keep this uh, under 30 minutes, but we're going to use the, two la the last two minutes to have predictions. Uh, we have a game on Saturday, the match day first, the first match day of the Bundesliga against Augsburg. Who do, who do you think is going to start? The, uh, the I, start think, I think we'll definitely see, I, I'll say Royce for sure. Um, in the back, I mean, in the back, there's a lot of, it's, it could be up in the air. Uh, I think we'll see Hummels. Absolutely. I think Sancho will start. I think, I think Gutzel might start at a striker, but kind of play like a, uh, not necessarily like a striking role as much as like a, a false nine. He'll kind of drop back into the midfield potentially more like a forward than a striker. If not, I wouldn't be surprised if Alcacer started, but I think I don't think we'll see both Gutsa and Alcacer start. I think it'll be one or the other. I'd like to see Brandt start. Um, I think Brandt and Sancho or Hazard and Sancho on the wings with Royce in the middle, kind of playing the attacking midfield role. I think that's really where Dortmund has the most firepower on the attack with either Gotza or Alcacer up top. And admittedly, you could put Royce at striker too if you wanted, but I think his style fits better in the midfield. And then I imagine we'll see Witzel and Delaney kind of playing more central defensive positions and they'll obviously help out on the attack when they can and they're both very reliable in those positions and their experiences and uh their seasons last year their performance i think are a testament to how valuable they are to the team yeah i want to also talk quickly about weigel julian weigel yeah his last games were amazing like the last game in the cup he was like and the game against bayern he was like ruling the midfield and i guess yeah. he's going to start against augsburg my 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 11 Starting players for Augsburg are going to be Hitz. I don't think Berkey is ready. Yeah, I think I think Hitz has been phenomenal yeah. too as well. I can't I can't wait to yeah. see what he does. And then I would say Pichek, Akanji, Hummels, Schulz, and in the midfield Witzel and Weigel. And then we will have like some sort of uh, Marco Royce, Jaden Sancho, and then Brandt or Goods in the middle. And I'm going to say that. Uh, uh, Paco Alcácer is going to start just because he has confidence ag against Augsburg and he yeah. always scored so many goals against them. So that's it. this is my startup, uh, my 11 uh, starting players. So thank you, Ryan, uh, for this. And we're gonna absolutely, yeah. And it was fun. It was fun doing this. And Indeed. we we are going to see you guys like next week. And we hope that the season starts in a good, a good fashion. Yep, very excited. Very excited indeed. Okay, thank you guys. See you in the next one.